Hello everyone, welcome to the Jump Season Preview on the At The Races social media feeds in conjunction with 10Bet. Now then, 10 years ago, I was broadcaster of the year. I really was, I know it's a surprise, but I was. Um, in 1999, Mick Fitzgerald won the Cheltenham Gold Cup and the Champion Chase. And when it was a three-day festival, Kevin Blake had a couple of winners at the biggest meeting of them all. Welcome, lads. Great to have you here. Um, Blakey, let's start with you. Those, those were great days, weren't they, when you when you did tip a winner at Cheltenham that uh, time? I'm a couple of decades younger than you, Matt, so I can't actually recall the three-day festival. <laughs> there you can. That's one. <laughs> <laughs> with those lines on your forehead, you can. Um, That's from Dino with you. <laughs> great memories, Fitzy, for you uh, of Cheltenham. Uh, the only one that escaped you was the champion hurdle, but, of course, that, that great Seymour business in the Gold Cup. Yeah, the, the great thing is they can never take it off me. Oh. And the fact that I was leading rider there two years running, I think that's their two trophies that are very proudly sitting on the mantelpiece. Well, I was going to say, the fact you bring that up, Fitzy, and just remind people yeah. of how good you were. Yeah. Slightly, are those two things you value almost most, being top jockey at the Cheltenham Festival twice? Yeah, because if, when I got the job with Nicky Henderson in 1993, that was the one thing that I thought was the greatest lure of them all, was the fact that he had such a good record at Cheltenham, that it meant that I was going to ride winners at the festival. And, you know, I know a lot of people say, oh, it's all about Cheltenham. Well, trust me, when you're a rider, a lot of people will look at your Cheltenham CV and judge you by it. Would you think at this stage, lads, it's, it's Nico de Boinville who's sat at home thinking just no injuries this season, no injuries, because he's almost got a golden hand at Henderson's? Well, I suppose they are. none of them aren't injuries, man. <laughs> well, this is true. But you know what I'm saying. Like, he's, he's the one lad, isn't he, Fitzy, who's out there thinking, crikey, I could do almost anything this season. Well, yeah. Well, I think there's quite a few, you know, riders that are. Jack Kennedy in Ireland is another one. He'll be thinking, please mm. let me just get through this season with no more injuries. Because he's a young man who's got his whole career in front of him. We forget how young he is. Mm. He's so talented. He just needs a little bit of luck. But, like, like with Nico... Constitution Hill, if you've got him to look forward to, you do not want to see anybody else getting on board. And that's not even mentioning Paul Townend, who's, who's not the oldest man on, on the planet. Yeah, yeah well, he, like to ride the winners that he has done at the festival. Like he, he had what looked like a bad start to last year's Cheltenham Festival, and then suddenly the floodgates opened. When you've got that many good horses to ride, Kevin. Yeah, and Willie's, that's happened with Willie a few times in the last kind of six or seven years, hasn't it? Like the, the first day or even the first two days haven't gone all that well, and then Thursday and Friday it's just been relentless. Mm -hmm. And like this is the time of year, you start going down through your lists and you start doing your revision and reminding yourself what's around, and you try and put down a list of 40 horses trained by Willie Mullins. And it's tricky, because there's an awful lot yeah. that you want on there that there's no room for. Like, that's how much ammunition he has. It's absolutely terrifying, really. Yeah. Right. Let's wake you up, then. Let's get on with it and see what we can do on the anti-post markets with the champion hurdle. Tuesday, the 14th of March, 2023, we will all, well, we might not all be there, but we'll be all hoping to be there to watch Constitution Hill against Tunnysuckle, Vauban, Stateman, Epitomp, possibly. Probably go in the mares if, if Constitution Hill and Honeysuckle turn up. You'd imagine Sir Gerhard, Bob Ollinger. I mean, there's a whole load in there. And if they all turned up like that, we'd be just giggly on that morning. Um, I guess the obvious place to start, Fitzy, is, is with you here. Constitution Hill... Um, he's a little bit like the Baid of the jumps, isn't he? In that he looks like he might just be unbeatable. But as we found out with Baid all those weeks ago, not every horse can remain unbeaten. No, but it, it, it's, it, it's a funny one, really, because if you look at a performance on its own, winning the Supreme Novices hurdle with the ease with which he did, it's impressive. But then you look at the clock and it backs up that performance. You also look at the horses that he beat who have followed up since then. You know, like John Bond was, what, 17 lengths or 22 lengths behind him. He went on and won at the Entry Festival. Mm. So, you know, the form has a really strong look to it. It's the fact that the horse has got such a good constitution as well. 
in the sense that he's See what very, you did re there. yeah, yeah, very good, very relaxed. Did you do that without realising? Yeah, it? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, I do more things without realising. You'll be saying he goes up the hill at Nicky's really well in a minute. Really, like honestly, he's not a horse that is flashy. It's only when they when they start to get galloping him that he, you see what he's really like. But it's it's really interesting. There was no doubt in a lot of the lads' minds leading into Cheltenham, which was the better horse, yep. even though the the bookmakers were struggling to split them. The lads always felt that Constitution Hill was going to be the one, and you know, and so it proved. I think a um, little couple of conversations with Aidan Coleman during the flat season when he was when he was out and about. I think he was at Glorious Goodwood. Um, just mentioning John Bond to him, and and just the way he talked about Constitution Hill and bits of work that he'd done with John Bond suggested. Well, he strongly suggested that he hadn't actually seen anything like Constitution Hill, that he was just bowled over by the horse, and that's from the guy who was riding John Bond. Yeah, well, the Constitution Hill is so interesting because, look, what he did that day in particular, and in fairness, it wasn't like his first two runs last season over hurdles had been, you know, far behind it. Like, he was very good every day, very good on the clock, very visually impressive, but Cheltenham was another level. But I suppose the, the one thing I'd say, Fitzy, is that the, the race did lend itself yeah. to a very big performance. You know, they still have to have the ability to do it, but... You know, John Bond and Dysart Diamond, Diamond, oh, Dim Who? Dynamo really did rock and roll yeah. early on. They overdid it. And he had a beautiful position, got a beautiful toe into the race. And it was set up for him. And look, he duly delivered. Um, the time was whatever it was, you know, 20 lengths faster than the champion heard later on the card. It, it was stunning. You know, the official handicapper has given him 170 or whatever he has. Yeah. You know, something like an unbelievable number. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not every day a race was set up like that. You know, so I, 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 I'm not, I, I don't want to dive fully in. Well, we're in a slightly weird situation, aren't we, that we've got a horse unbeaten in 16 out of 16 and a horse unbeaten in three out of mm. three. And at the time of speaking, the horse who's unbeaten three out of three is, you know, around six to four for the champion hurdle. Honeysuckle's around four to one. I mean, there'll be people out there thinking Honeysuckle at four to one is a fantastic each way bet. And I know there'll be people shouting at the screen, saying, oh, you can't bet each way at four to one. But in a race like this, at this minute, it, it wouldn't seem the craziest thing on earth, would it? I mean, Constitution Hill blows out in his first run and Honeysuckle suddenly odds on for the champion. Oh. Yeah, look, <laughs> look, look at Honeysuckle. You, you, what can you say about her? You know, she's 16 from 16. Um, she, she's, her record speaks for itself. You know, her rating has never, I suppose, gone up to that next level. But that's... Mares don't, do they? I mean, that's... The, very, the very else. rarely. And, look, the champion hurdle division hasn't been super deep for a while now. Um, and for me, as brilliant as she is, and she keeps winning, and you feel bad for kind of cribbing and crabbing a bit of mare that keeps winning, for me, she was probably five pounds below her best all the way through last season. Um, like, I don't think we saw her at her very best for whatever reason. Maybe she's a little bit older. Maybe she's getting a bit um, clever and not exerting herself as much when she gets there. But, um, you know, if these two had met at Punchestown, like, like was briefly billed, you know, I think there's no doubt Constitution Hill would have gone off av. You know, what would the result have been? It's it, difficult because you're not on home ground for Honeysuckle, isn't it? Because you did, when you were riding, does it... Um, um, is, does anyone really know why it might make a big difference travelling? Obviously, some horses travel to Punchestown fine, others blow out completely. Is the travelling a factor? Well, it has to be a factor because it's, you know, it's a different environment. You know, Constitution Hill is used to just getting on the box and going to the races. Mm -hmm. And, they, you know, it's normal for them. But when they have to stay overnight, it's different, different water. You know, all the different factors have to be taken into account. But the fact that Honeysuckle has been here to the UK a few times and her record is unblemished, mm -hmm. I think gives you a lot of faith that she's going to be able to carry on that level of form. The only thing is... We, we have nothing that matches up with Constitution Hill and Honeysuckle, so we're, we're guessing, really. But on what we saw at Cheltenham, if I said to you, I, I can give you, you can have a free bet on Honeysuckle or Constitution Hill, on what we saw just at Cheltenham, There's which one more, would you pick? Well, it would be only Constitution Hill, I know. wouldn't it? Uh, well, mind the thing is, we do get, if you took the alternative view, you are getting a very fair price for your money. Yeah. You see the prices there in front of us, like 11 to 8, 7 to 2, it's a big old gap. 
So our sponsors today, uh, Ten Bet go eleven to eight Constitution Hill, seven to two Honeysuckle, fifteen to two Bar. Just before we wrap this up, because in some ways we've not said anything that, that the people at home don't know so far. Are there any lurkers in there? I mean, Vauban obviously had a huge reputation. State man came through the ranks and still could be just about anything. Sir Gerhard as a two-miler rather than over further. Um, are there any lurkers there, Kev? Uh, well, look, we should say it now. The difficulty we're going to have throughout this programme with William Mullins' horses is that we don't know plans for an awful lot of these. He, you know, as is the norm for him, he traditionally doesn't start making shouts until the end of October in terms of chasing hurdling. Vauban... You know, five days before the, yeah. <laughs> the race at Cheltenham. So. Well, well, Vauban is one we can be sure enough is going to stay hurdling. Mm. Um, and look, he's in the third five there, but he looked a very good juvenile but Lord, we, we've seen some very good juveniles over the years that just don't step up because they need to step up a lot. You know, 20 pounds plus into open company. He's looked very good, looked very pacey. Does he jump well enough to be a champion hurdler? You know, that's a question I'd ask. And look, I, I, I'm always pessimistic with the juveniles, Fitzy. I don't know about you. I've seen it too many times over the years. They look like rocket ships against the four-year-olds and the following season, they, they look a lot more ordinary. So, for me, I wouldn't be going near him at eight to one. And we'll, we'll see how he, how well, he stands state, in when he gets there. State is, is probably more interesting in the sense that mm. he went down the handicap route. He won the county hurdle. What was it? I think at the time of the race was 4.6 seconds faster than the Triumph Hurdle. Mm. Vauban was very superior in the Triumph Hurdle, mind, like he dotted around. But Stateman then backed up to Punchestown and won the Grade 1. Mm. Now, I did a time comparison with Honeysuckle um, at Punchestown on the day, and the time comparison, it compares really well. I think it was only 1.5 seconds slower from the third hurdle right the way around mm. at each obstacle. He, he's got the pace yep. mm. and he's got the ability to travel. His jumping as well, I think, is getting better all the time with experience. And I think, he, I think he's definitely a player in here, yep. State Man. At the, you know, you're looking for something because we all see it. Every year we look at the end results and we see all these horses. God, why didn't we see that finishing second or didn't see that mm. finishing place? That's and, because there hasn't always been an at the races jumps preview show in conjunction with in fact there's never been with in conjunction with Tembet so um, that is why Fitzy that's why we're here yeah. this time it won't happen fingers crossed uh, uh, it's interesting though isn't it number one it's not that interesting but Mighty Potter was pulled up behind Constitution Hill mm -hmm. then went to Punchestown and beat Sir Gerhard I mean that's what they're up against when they face Constitution Hill I mean no one's suggesting Mighty Potter was in the same form at Cheltenham as he was at Punchstown. Yeah, I think, but I think it was fairly wrong that day. I was, I, I really, I, that's a horse we'll talk about later. I really like him. I, I didn't, I wasn't happy with him from the get-go. He was hanging. He didn't, he didn't. There was something wrong with him that day. I think. You tip him up. Um, I did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't a good challenge for you, was it, Blakey? Uh, better, better than yours, I reckon. <laughs> no, Mum. Mum was brilliant. Uh, uh, right, while, champion while, while, chase. Tell you while we're on the champion hurdle match, just. Mm. You can have the opportunity now, just knit this in the bud. New season. Would you like to apologise to Henry de Bromhead and the people of Ireland? For your comments about honeysuckle no. at Cheltenham last year, no, because no? as you've just, just said, double down. As you've just said on this show, Kev, which really puts you in the same boat as me, she wasn't that great last season. She, she did, was below she did win the champion hurdle, Matt, and unbeaten through the season. Never, yeah. never been beaten. Actually, but you did just diss her just now and said she was at least five pounds below form yeah. all season. It's a compliment. She can be, she can be below form and Didn't, still go unbeaten. I think when people yeah, replay, you, you, don't want, you don't want to apologise. It, won't, it no, won't sound no. like a. You can nip it in the bud right now. I'm really, I've got to say that she was at least five pounds below form all of last okay, season. Okay, okay. So we'll move on. We gave, the the we gave you the chance. My to show. Nip it in the bud. My show. Control yourself. <laughs> Let's go on to the champion chase. Won by Mick Fitzgerald on Cool Equinaim. Uh, back in the day, that was a great ride from Fitzy. People forget how strong one Fitzgerald one was. Yeah. No, they, you don't mess with Fitzy, I'll tell you that much. I did once, it was a big mistake. Uh, <laughs> uh, Betway Queen Mother champion chase in Ergamine. Two to one. Shiskin at seven to two, who we all know is better than an Ergamine if he produces his best. Fernie Hollow at six and a half, I won't apologise for that either. <laughs> Gentleman to me at 11, Edward Stone, the young pretender who was beaten at Aintree at 12. Gallopin de Champ, is he the lurker at 14 to one and bigger prices elsewhere. Going to start with you here, Blakey, uh, seeing as you're a little bit rattled. Um, <laughs> in Ergamine, the real deal or not? Um, look, I don't think there's very much between these two horses. 
you know, on their best days. You know, the Clarence House was one of the best races we've seen in the last number of years, wasn't it? And I think everything went right for an Ergamine on the day. Shishkin, things didn't go perfectly to plan. He still managed to get up and beat him. But, you know, an Ergamine that changed a few things going to Cheltenham and he was probably better there. You know, Shishkin didn't turn up on the day. Um, so his task was, was much eased. But, you know, I think on, on both their best days, there's very little between these two. So, you know, my, my hope is that we just get to see this again and again. I want to see more of these two button heads, you know, whether that's in the Tingle Creek or we have to wait a bit longer. Um, I think this could be a proper rivalry now to, to match any of the, the great ones we've seen in decades past, if we get to see it a few more times. Here's a question for you quickly. Do you like Energamine from off the pace or as a front runner? I like him as a front runner. I've always liked him as a front runner. I was surprised what they did at Cheltenham. And look, the way with Shishkin running below form, I think he would have won whatever they did. Um, like, I think going into last season, there, there was a, a reason to think that he might be a little bit better going right-handed. Um, because he did just jump that way a little bit through his novice season. But I think he was better straighter last, last season. So I don't think that's going to be a thing going forward. You know, I think Shishkin seems to prefer going left-handed. I think that's still a thing. You know, we saw that in the, in the Clarence house. You know, he wasn't helping himself by edging left at a good few of his fences. So, look, I don't think it's something that, that'll ever... It'll only be ever be marginal things, but I think when you're dealing with these two, when they meet, you have to deal with marginal things, because, like I say, like, I, I genuinely don't think there's much between them at all. Yeah, that's interesting. Should we, should we just pop the betting up from our friends at 10bet for the Champion J? So you just have a quick look at home exactly what's going on here. And Ergamine, the favourite... Of course, currently anti post ahead of Shishkin at two to one and seven to two. Fernie Hollow at six and a half for Cheverly. Gentleman to me at eleven. Edward Stone in there at twelve to one once again. Fitzy. Um, I mean, it's not going to take a rocket scientist probably that you be in the Shishkin camp over in Ergamine. Yes, but uh, do you know what? I think looking at Shishkin, and I actually went back and watched again um, yesterday the Clarence House and the Champion Chase and, you know, the Kempton race as well. And it makes you think that the early part of the race is where Shishkin seems to be... You, you look at him and you think, he's under pressure here early. Well, it's like watching Altior again, isn't well, it? It's yeah. Altior all over again. But I, <laughs> I just feel that if there is a weakness in Shishkin, it's the fact that he, he makes life hard for himself in the early part of the race. If you make a mistake in those sort of races, doing that with a horse like an Ergamine, you're behind it. And suddenly you have to make that ground up. You have to then put yourself under the pump to jump every single fence perfectly. Mm. And if you miss one, suddenly you're in trouble. Has that slightly creeped in, Fitz? Yeah. Because I can't remember him as a novice ever mm. thinking he's losing a length here. He was gaining lengths. But, yeah. but at this critically top level, he just lacks that... Slash of brilliance, maybe. I don't know the fact. Look, I think he has, he has the brilliance, but I think he's just making life hard for himself in the early part of the race. And I just worry that if that creeps in even more, he's going to make life really hard for himself. You don't get away with it. If you, like, if you make a mistake at a crucial point in a champion chase, you struggle to get back into the race because they're gone. Fitzy, is there any chance, any remote chance, any talk at all that he could go up and trip at some point? Well, back when, up you, and trip. when you go back to his form over hurdles, mm. you'll see that he actually ran over two miles three and a half at Huntingland. Yeah. And I think that was in the Sydney Banks when he, when he won that. He looked very comfortable doing mm. that. I, I, look, there hasn't been, to my knowledge, I'm sure it's been bandied about, but it wouldn't be the biggest surprise in the world, I think, if, if one day you saw this horse step up and trip. But, I mean, look, you, you, you've been a Cheltenham Festival winning jockey. You can tell me better than I can tell you, but... At Cheltenham, isn't it best to have a horse who stays stay. a little bit yeah, further? Yeah. But that's <laughs> why I think he needs the early part of the race to go smooth for him. Then his stamina comes into play. Yeah. Because so often you, you see it all the time at Cheltenham. And it was, the, it was the one, if I could go back and criticise some of my own rides, you'd say that you got there too soon all the time. It's the ones that are finishing the races off that win mm. at Cheltenham. And that's what this horse does so well. And I think, you know, he's just got to make sure that his jumping is up to scratch and he's not behind the bridle too early in the race. If that's the case and he's still there turning for home, you know Shishkin's mm. going to finish. What about Fernie Hollow? 
slightly wow. a forgotten horse. He's won his last five races, including beating Riviere Detel at Leopardstown on the 26th of December 2021. Um, could he be the lurker? It's, he's an interesting one, isn't he? Because like, he's got such eye-catching form, you know, bumpers, um, over hurdles. He beat Bob Ollinger the only time we saw him. You know, he, he was very much the fav for the Arkle. Festival bumper winner. Yeah. Beating Appreciate It. Yeah, like he, he's clearly riddled with talent. But looking back on those two runs over fences, you know, for me, the first day, there, there was a fair bit of room for improvement in his jumping. The second day, he was better. But he wasn't quite there. And now you look at R Riviere de Tell. At the time, she was really booming. But in the fullness of time in the season, you know, she ended up coming up short at that level. So should he be... Look, I'm not doubting he's a, he's a smashing prospect, etc. Should he be third fav for the champion chase? Not for me. I'd point to a stablemate of his. I think yeah. he might be fourth Gentleman fav. To me. Yeah. Well, why, why isn't there more talk about him? Well, let's just say the champion chase was tomorrow yeah. with these runners. Mm. I mean, you'd imagine Dental to me bangs off in front, Energamine six second probably, and then it's just a case of if Energamine can ever take over and if Shiskin can come powering yeah, from the back, isn't yeah. it? But you can kind of see how. I mean, Energamine's probably not going to have to front run if Gentle to yeah. well, me is in the field. To, yeah. Gentleman to me is free, and he mm. like he wants to get on with and. He, he's really interesting, that mm. gentleman to me. Like, I wonder where they're going to send him. Like, will they, is he the sort of horse that Willie might think, come on, let's just roll the dice first time and go Tingle Creek? Yeah, because the thing about him is, is like, he, he is wild. He's a bit wild, he's a bit raw. You know, he's very aggressive with his jumping. But, like, he, he reminds you a small bit of a young undersell. You know, he's just a bit wild, just a bit loose. Don't know how much control there is from the saddle there because he is that strong. But what he did at entry was deadly. You know, Edward Stone, the whole way through the season, didn't miss a beat. Uh, and gentlemen, to me, put him away with authority. You know, having made a couple of little skewy, bitty mistakes on the way around, you know, two out, vital stage, yeah. and he just powered back and went away. You know, that was a big performance. With Edward Stone, am I being unfair? I don't want to be mean to him, but... He, he could be a bit of sort of so royale for me in the he, he'll probably win a grade one somewhere along the line but he'll mop up grade yeah, two. yeah but you, you know look you don't ever want to knock a horse who's won a race like the Arco. no but at the same time renewal. was there that much strength and depth in the race you know and that's what you have to ask he's going to have to improve another 10 pounds yeah, this season isn't what it? he does give you though is solid form yeah he, re he regularly runs to his level. Mm. And I think if you're looking for an each-way bet in a race like a champion chase, he's going to be able to travel. Mm. He's, like, he's a very, very good jumper. Yeah. And I think he is, he is a player. Yeah. He likes the track. Yeah, and, and look, if you wanted to be to, to view his form kindly, like they did campaign him quite aggressively last season. Yeah. Aintree came at the end of it all. You know, maybe he just was a shade yeah. beyond his right. best. You know, and if you can forgive that and you look at the, his form as a whole... You know, like I say, if you, like you say, if you wanted an each way alternative to the front end, he's the one. Mm. Yeah. He's solid. It's quite weird that we're now talking about this race and not a mention of Shakan Porsois, yeah. <laughs> who's a, who could be back to big prices. As far as Cheltenham is concerned, we we've given up with him now. Well, it's one of the, it's frustrating because I was certainly prepared to give him another chance at Cheltenham. You know, I, I you are quite forgiving, isn't it? Hence why you're sat here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, look, he, he's so talented. He's always been so talented. And we even saw it last season, you know, when he's on, he's so good. And, like, how many horses really and truly have an issue with travelling to the UK? Really? Like, it's a tiny, tiny number. Like, is that the thing or has it just been a bit of misfortune? He wasn't quite right in the Tingle Creek. He obviously didn't get around last in the, at Cheltenham last March. I'd like to give him another chance, but he is getting older. Yeah. You know, has a, is, it, has, is his best chance back there, you, you know? You, 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 He's not going to be better now. No. He probably doesn't need to be to be competitive, but at the same time, I think a lot of punters out there are thinking... OK, lads, yeah. let's get a selection. Who wins? If you had your bet today, the race is tomorrow. Champion Chase winner is... Oh, of the big two, it's an ergamine, but if you ask me to have a bet at the prices we had, it's probably gentleman to me, to be honest. OK, Fitzy? Shishkin. I'm going to hope Shishkin bounces back. I really hope he does, because he's so exciting to watch. Yeah. You never quite mm. know... With Shishkin now. You just want to, you want to see him turn for home on the tail of an ergamine yeah. and then think, come and on. Let's, let's see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, it's just wetting the appetite. Now, what about the guy to the jumps here on At The Races? It's all there on the website. All the W's 
at theraces.com forward slash jumps. It's on our Guide to the Jumps mega site. And thank you for the kind association of 10bet. Stayers hurdle time. Who is going to be best of the best? So let's have a look at the prices then for the Paddy Power Stairs Hurdle. Flooring Porter at four to one. He'll be going from the front once again. <laughs> if he's on his game, it'll be very hard to pass. Classical Dream, well, we know he doesn't stay, so he's got no chance at 11 to one. You can rule out the second favourite straight away. Blazing Carl at 12. Buzz, could he come back? The Cesarevich winner who's been injured. The nice guy. Very kind of people to name horse after me. 12 to 1. Uh, Zana here at 12. Bob Ollinger at 14. Uh, appreciate it at 16. Manella Kakuna at 16. And Three Strike Life at 16. I, I have to say, Kevin, and, and you can't have a go at me because you, of course, have gone for Aloe in the King George, who's the favourite. Um, when I look at that list, if Florian Porter is there on the day, I can't see any of that list beating Florian Porter. It's not an unreasonable view. Like, it, look, he's won the last two. You couldn't say he's dominant, but he clearly is right at the very top. Um, he has a kink in him. Mm. It hasn't held him back. I love it, a kinky horse. I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it, did, it didn't hold him back as much last season. You know, with a bit of, with a bit of luck, obviously. You know, Leopardstown, things went against them with the start and everything else. But Cheltenham, I don't think his, his quirks... His thing is, he, he hangs left, he jumps left. And the way the track is set up for the stairs hurdle, it doesn't punish him as much as it does elsewhere. So it's perfectly reasonable. You know he's going to run in the race. You know he's going to be targeted for it, which is a big thing with the stairs hurdle. Loads of horses on that list could be doing other things over completely different obstacles, over different trips, etc. That's his race. That's his big day. Gavin has shown multiple times now that he can have him revved up and rolling on the day. So, like, if you are... If that was your type of thing, taking a, a you know four to one a better race in March. It's probably one of the, the better options you'll see. Yeah, at I mean, this he's not, festival. He's, if he's there on the day, Fitz, he's not the dual winner's not going to be four to one because no. I don't think but he, won't, he won't be four to seven either. But he might no. be two to one, you know. Yeah. I don't think people are going to care particularly what he's done up to the race either, even if he got beat on his previous run, because everyone knows he mm. he comes alive at Cheltenham. Well, we all sit here in all the previews on the build-up to Cheltenham. And we all say, look at Cheltenham Festival form. Mm. And you look at this horse at Cheltenham Festival form, it's pretty good. Yeah. Mm. Two more horses I want to give a quick mention to in this race. Firstly, just because uh, Andy Gemmell, if you're listening, and I'm sure you are, you will be distraught that Paisley Park wasn't even mentioned on the betting. But he'd be 10 turning 11. I mean, he wasn't beaten far in good races last season, Fitzy. He just looks as though he needs four and a half miles now rather than three and a half. That's the problem. Um, but unless it was bottomless heavy ground, is he just now a bit too old? Are we living on memories? Yeah, I think we, we all live on memories, Matt. <laughs> all of us. Well, the mind still allows us, Fitz. Correct. And then when the memory goes, That's it. the legs stop <laughs> That's working, it. the arms, you just sit, you just lie in your bed, don't you? Anyway, back to Paisley Park. I think <laughs> you have to give him the That's respect true. that he deserves. And <laughs> yes, he's a player because you're looking at that list and you're thinking, well, have, have any of those horses achieved what he has? And the answer is no. Yep. But at the same time, there is a couple of horses in there that I think if they go down the hurdling route, so a horse like the nice guy who looks tailor made for chasing and he's at that age, but then Manella Cocooner is a horse who's interesting. Danny Mullins finished second on this horse at the Punchestown Festival. He would have a pretty good guide how this horse matches up to Flooring Porter. And it wouldn't be the biggest surprise, I think, if he were to mm. throw his hat into the stairs hurdle ring. And this time last year, having myself, I just got to mention it, just uh, absolutely banged in buzz in the Cesarevich, despite the fact that Kevin had previously told me that the first six home would be Irish train. They weren't. Uh, buzz won the Cesarevich. Remember that? Um, uh, I, rem <laughs> I remember thinking Buzz will win the stairs hurdle this time last year. Now, obviously, he's had an injury. Kevin, and, and that really does make it hard to have an anti-post bet because the one thing that you want in an anti-post bet really is a horse that you know is fit, you know is OK, and might be targeted at the race. This horse, we don't really know, well, I don't, whether he's OK. His rehab has gone really right. well. Yeah, he, like he fractured his pelvis, didn't yeah. he? And it's, it, it's as... It's in, tricky, isn't it? Well, as, look, as injuries go, it's not the worst. No. Um, in, in terms of prognosis of getting back to what they were, but you would like to see him go again, wouldn't you? Um, wonderful horse. If he if he came back and looked 
you know, as he was when, he, when we last saw him, absolutely. Just, just Fitzy, because on this show, um, we haven't got much time, but equally just a, a bit of education would be great for those of us who aren't horsey. Break, fracturing a pelvis or breaking a pelvis or whatever he's done, where is that in a horse and what has basically, he actually... Basically, it's like if you look behind the saddle, right. basically at the top of the horse's bum, you know, the pelvis is in there. And it, yes, it, it's an important part of a horse's anatomy, but... We have seen instances in the past, Kevin, of horses who have fractured their pelvis, mm. who come back and are absolutely fine. Right. So yeah. not as and bad as a leg. Or yeah, and the, no. the, the, re the reason why it's, the prognosis is generally good is because you've got so much muscle back there that the muscle almost acts, oh, acts yeah. as a cast. Yeah, and as long as it's not a, a particularly bad break, it can, it can be quite... But his rehab has gone very well. They were very diligent with mm. the whole thing. And, you know, they're very hopeful that he mm. can return. Right, we move on on this at the races jump season preview in conjunction with 10 bet. Let's go to the blue ribbon of the Cheltenham Festival, the biggest one of all, won by our very own Mick Fitzgerald in the studio today. And Gallopin Deschamps is at 100 to 30, the current favourite. Incidentally, he's around uh, 20 to 1 for the champion chase, but much more likely to end up here, we think. A Plutard, defending champion at 7 to 2, Ahoy Senior at 17 to 2, the young pretender from Lucinda Russell's stable, Alaho. Well, we kind of know he's won the Ryanair chase already at 10 to 1. Uh, well, he won't win it at 10 to 1, that's fair to say. Uh, Lompresse, another young pretender at 10s. Monkfish, how we forget how good he once was. 16 to 1, the Monkfish, hopefully he'll be back. Statler at 16, and then one or two probably you haven't even heard of. Um, right, so Gallopin Deschamps, um, Kevin Blake, Gallopin Deschamps, is he what? Well, he is, I think, one of the most exciting young horses around. Oh, no question. Yeah, what he did pretty much every day over fences last year was just brilliant. From that chasing debut at Leopardstown's Christmas meeting, he was brilliant. You know, onto the grade one at Leopardstown, brilliant. He was looking brilliant at Cheltenham until that happened. You know, that, that really jumped it perfectly well, seemingly, and just the undercarriage let him down and went to Punchestown and again was probably better again. The thing, the lingering little niggle in the back of my mind, people will look to his hurdle form and say, look, he won over three miles. He's clearly going to be a Gold Cup horse. But then you look at him and you watch what he was doing over two and a half miles. His jumping technique, I think, got a bit more measured as the season went on, which, which is encouraging with a view to the Gold Cup. But, God, he's not short of pace. And it'll be fascinating to see what they do with him in terms of a campaign. You know, if they start him off at three miles and set out their stall and from, from the get-go and say, right, we're going to make try and make you a Gold Cup horse, or they go to something like the John Durkin over two and a half and feel their way. Because I just wouldn't like to be bullish that the real extreme stamina test of the Gold Cup will necessarily show him the best effect. But you, you couldn't question his talent. He's a brilliant horse. It's a real problem for owners, isn't it, Fitzy? Because although the Ryanair chase, we'd all love to win it, all the cliches, etc. it's not the champion chase and it's not the Gold Cup. And mm. many people look at a horse like Allah, who's been ring, winning the Ryanair for fun, and they almost dismiss him and say, oh, well, just why won't they run him in the... Like, if you owned Gallopin Deschamps with this incredibly exciting talent, I think you'd have to be massively disappointed if he ends up in the Ryanair chase. <laughs> you know, I think... When you don't you... understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd all yeah, love yeah. to win the Ryanair I know, chase. but if you ask a breeder, <laughs> right, so when you set out your stall to breed a racehorse, which one are you trying to breed? Are you trying to breed a Gold Cup winner or a Ryanair chase winner? Well, you're trying to breed a Gold Cup winner. Mm. And I think the Ryanair, for all it is a brilliant race, and it's a grade one, and it deserves its place on the roster, it's still a race that horses that have tried one this Consolation race. Yeah, <laughs> or tried the other, have all, I've said, right, no, OK, well, no, let's go right now. No offence to it. We've, of course, uh, fairly recently had that brilliant news that the festival will stay at four days rather than five. Um, but if you were making it a three-day festival, you'd get rid of the Ryanair. 
I, 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 there was a time where I would have agreed with you, Matt, but I, I don't. I think when you get to open company, it's not unreasonable no. to have a mid-range option. It it's has the, its place. Yeah, it's the mid-range options yeah, amongst the novices that wind me up. You know, a new stable people. You just want to win anything. Don't care about competition. No, no, I, 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 I get rid of a lot of the novice races. I think in novice company, the they, sh they should be kept together. But once you get to open company and you've you've multiple generations of, of novices coming together, I don't think it's unreasonable to have another option and, there. And I, as we're on this, right? <laughs> I just want to put my 10 pence in. Yeah, well, you'll be right. more sensible Please than Please, can we bring back the Novice Handicap at the festival? OK. We'll bring it back, but... You no have, Irish horses. No, you have, you, <laughs> <laughs> you have to get rid of one of the Grade 1 Novice hurdles to get it back. Yeah, okay. Is that a fair trade? Yeah. Well, yeah. just okay. get, get rid of the mares. Any of the mess, all of the mess. I mean, <laughs> sound I mean, like sound like Michael O'Leary now. Well, all guests get rid of them all. Um, but anyway, well, that's we've sorted that out. But ju just on Gallop and the shop, yeah. like it, it might sound mad, but like I, if you ran him in a champion chase, I think he's very, very competitive. Yeah. Okay. Like for me, you you watch him in his races. I think his jumping is at his very best late on when he's when he's been at, when he's not been asked to woe, he's been told to go, and he's really sharp and low. You know, and over a shorter trip, he gets to do that the whole way, basically. When, you, um, when, you, when you've got an asset, you mm, want to use the asset. Yeah. And his greatest asset is attack. Yeah. And when you saw him make that chasing debut at Leopardstown, I have not seen one like that. Mm. Well, that's was, the reason we're here. But it was, it was honestly, like every, anybody who saw that race, like you saw him eye up a fence, lock onto it and just go. Yeah. And like when you see a horse do that, that is what makes the hairs in the back of your neck stand up yeah. because you've seen something special. And where is he particularly good? You know, final circuit. Absolutely. <laughs> attack. Yeah. Can he attack in a race like the Gold Cup? Probably not because mm. he'd be trying the trip for the first time. Mm. So you'll all, as a rider, you'd always have that in the back of your head thinking, yeah, I should be yeah, saving here. You're coming here. back, you're coming saving. back. I should be mm. saving here. But like you, if you saw him set out and go in a race like a Ryanair, he ain't. They ain't gonna get him. Mm. I do feel I've got to just say like, this is exactly though the conversation that the At the Races social team had. We've got an asset. Let's use them. <laughs> and here we are. Um, uh, <laughs> just a mention on a Plutard, yeah. because yeah. there's something about a Plutard that I think makes people think the horse is is still vulnerable, but. To be honest, there, were, there haven't been many more impressive Gold Cup winners than a Plutard last year. I mean, he was totally dominant. You didn't think he'd stay, Matt. No, I didn't. But unlike some, Kevin, when I get it wrong, I hold my hands up because I'm not too big-headed <laughs> to think that I'm going to get everything right. I know you struggle <laughs> with admitting things like that, but, I'm, yeah, I got it wrong. With that in mind, do you want to apologise to Honeysuckle and her connections? Absolutely not, because I got her right. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's the difference. Um, a Plutard, I mean, whoever wins the Gold Cup is going to have to be... Very good to beat a Pluto. Yeah. Jeez, he was brilliant, wasn't he? But he, I think yeah. there is an argument, Kevin. When we see the caption of the the prices for the horses, there's an argument that says he should be favourite, really. Mm. Yeah, I'd be not. with you. Yeah, I'd be with you. You know, you haven't seen many more dominant Gold Cup winners than that. And look, he was beaten in it the year before. But when you watch that race back and you watch him closely, you you can kind of explain it. You know, his jumping on the day it just lacked a little bit of sharpness. He did start. That was the one thing with him last year that was so good, was his mm, jumper. Yeah. Whereas the previous year, I, can, I was on a preview here, and I said at the time, I said I thought he was the biggest certainty of the festival when he went to the Ryanair. Yeah, likewise. And, <laughs> and he disappointed. <laughs> yeah. I, I was gobsmacked. Mm. Like, absolutely gobsmacked. Mm. Let's just chat about a few less, I mean, they're obvious in a certain extent, but slightly less obvious as far as a Cheltenham Gold Cup winner being another Cheltenham Gold Cup winner. Um, so, Ahoy Senor. Yeah. OK, so he beat the Grand National winner, Noble Yates. He chased home Lon Presse, who, of course, is in the mix. And then he was, I think, super impressive in beating Fury Road. Yeah. But it's fair to say that all that form is a little bit below a Plutard, if you see what I mean. Like, it, it, it clearly shows he's talented and he's exciting, but he's in the 150s rather than the 170s as far as ratings are concerned. Yeah, he's a horse that I think he'd, he'd be well suited to... He seems to be better suited to flat tracks. Um, like, he ran a great race at the festival, but he was better when he won his novice hurdle at entry, when he won his novice chase at entry, and when he won at Newbury. I think he's a horse that, if you said to me which race would I like to ride him in, I'd say, in, you know, in the Coral, which is the old Hennessy. Yeah, like I wonder, is Cheltenham just a little bit too 
little bit too manic. You know, on the turn, yeah. room at a premium, because it, you can see clearly that the horse has like abundant talent, but he's just, he was struggling at times to put it all together last season, wasn't he? You know, his jumping just let him down at times. When he got it right, he was deadly, but it was just a bit messy at times, wasn't it? We've got to wrap up our, our chat on the Gold Cup, but just before we do, we've got to just throw in Monkfish, because yeah. there was a time when he was just about the most exciting mm. possible chaser in the in the world let alone i was going to say the country because he's not trained in in the country that we're in but um uh, the most you know he was just a very very exciting horse fitty i mean he's only eight going on nine come the cheltenham festival he could easily bounce back if yes he could right. he could and you know he's the sort of horse that you cannot rule out um because the talent is there he showed it when he won the Albert Barter at the festival and that form is very very strong mm. you know with the horses that finish behind him. Galvin too slow? Maybe had his best chance last season. Okay. Um, I mentioned Statler quick. And Harry uh, yeah and Harry Cobden mm. also um, mentioned the other day Brave Man's Game is, is his most exciting Probably horse. Brave Man's Game yes in the first half of the season. Mm. Second half of the season his form just hasn't lived up to what Okay Paul will put him away after Christmas. Um, uh, you wanted to mention Statler, Kev? Yeah, just because, look, he... he, he classic kind of modern Cheltenham Festival. He ended up going the National Hunt Chase to avoid a few others. But he was very good. Like, I think it was a, a good renewal of the National Hunt Chase. It was a bit of a dull race, but Statler went through it really well, jumped great, beat Run Wild Fred, who, who's a smart horse, and beat him well. And you can be certain that he's going to aim for the Gold Cup, which you can't say for all of the horses we've mentioned. And I, I just wouldn't be surprised if he came up to the, the sort of mark necessary to, to run well in it. And just because he's not a man to be messing with uh, due to his size, uh, if you are watching Shark Allen, yes, I'll give Hewick a mention. Uh, and best of luck. <laughs> the way he's going, who knows what will happen on the 17th of March. Hewick, hopefully, in the Gold Cup field, having cost 800 quid and won over 400,000. He might have won more by the time the Gold Cup comes around. Uh, so let's just check out those 10 bet prices once again for the Gold Cup and get selections uh, for, with the team. Um, Fitzy, the Gold Cup winner is? A Plutard. A Plutard. And Kev? Front end of the market, a Plutard. Statler at the bigger prices. OK, and you get these price boosts courtesy of 10 bet. A Plutard to win the Betfair Chase and the Gold Cup is 6 to 1. Would that tempt you? Yeah, he, he was brilliant in, in the yeah. Betfair yeah. last year. And I don't know what's going to turn up against him this year. He could have a victory lap there. And Fitzy, we think Constitution Hill will either come back in the Fighting Fifth or the Ascot Hurdle. If he wins either of those, which presumably he, well, he will, hopefully he will, the Christmas Hurdle will be obvious. So if you fancy him to win the Champion Hurdle, you might as well chuck the Christmas Hurdle in, mightn't you? You would have thought so. Do I think that Kempton is the perfect track for him? Probably not. Okay. But at the same time, you know, he's the horse that you'd like to be on in the champion hurdle now. Facil Vega to win the Supreme. I mean, if the horse can jump like it goes on the level, you could easily see that, couldn't you? Yeah, that's the difficult thing, isn't it? When you're, when you're talking about these novice hurdlers, we've, you know, we've, we've seen some of them jump fences and point to points, but you haven't seen them jump hurdles. And it can, it can go pear shape pretty quickly yeah. once you see them all over the obstacles. I, I think there's a couple, there's a few in there that might just scupper that and it's a long time between now and the festival and if you wanted a boost on energamine to win the tingle creek and the champion chase in there at five and a half to one with 10 bet so that's just a quick look at some of the big cheltenham festival races but before that of course at christmas i think a race that everyone simply loves on boxing day the king george at kempton um very hard to know exactly who will run at this stage but Alaho would be a pull in himself because although he, he only ever wins the Ryanair, um, he could easily be a King George horse at 94. Brave man's game, this could be perfect for him. We know he loves Kempton at 4 to 1, as does Lombresse at 7 to 1. Gallop and Deschamps, can they catch him round Kempton at 8? A Plutard. Some people might think he's a big price at nine because, let's face it, he doesn't lack pace. They don't go right-handed, but oh. He doesn't go right-handed, yeah. OK? Some people will think that's a low price at nine. Um, <laughs> senior at ten. He doesn't go round the course. Uh, Bob Ollinger at 14. My Drogo, he could be exciting this season. Remember, My Drogo is a good novice, 14. And Shishkin at 14. And, Kev, from what you were saying earlier, that Shishkin probably would, would vaguely interest you if you knew he might step up. Yeah, if it's going to happen, I suspect he probably needs to get beat first time, really. 
you know, if he goes and wins first time back this season in November or whatever, you, they're probably not going to change. If he tack. wins the Tingle Creek, yeah, there's only one way he's going, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, for sure. Like, like Alaho is fascinating there because for for a number of seasons you would have been you wouldn't have had the King George in your mind because he seemed better going left-handed, but he seems to have straightened up quite a bit. And and what he did at the Punchestown Festival back up to the the, the three miles was brilliant. Like, he's one of the best horses in training. There's absolutely no question. It's just he gets a little bit, not quite forgotten, but underestimated because he's knocking around in that, in that mid-range trip division. But Punchestown, like, he put a, a really strong field utterly to the sword. And... If, a blue t if something was to happen at Plute Tard and he was to not get to Cheltenham, like you wouldn't want to make it a million to one that Alaho could switch to the Gold Cup in the same colours. No. But, but equally, on the basis of Plute Tard does get to Cheltenham, you'd have to think that the King George is actually the big race aim for Alaho mm -hmm. rather than the Ryanair. Like, this would be the race, Fitzy, that would put Alaho on the map to a certain extent. King George winner. You'd have thought that's got to be the race for him. Mm. And it, it, it looks tailor-made for him. And, uh, you know, he's definitely... A, he deserves his place, I think, at the, at the head of the market. And the interesting horse... There's two interesting horses in here. Brave Man's Game and Lam Presse. Brave Man's Game was so good uh, when winning the mm. Feltham last year. And earmarked straight away as one to for come back and try and win the same race um, that Paul Nichols has won so many times with other good horses. I think in the early part of the season, this horse is at his very best. I can remember seeing him at Newbury when he won the Chalo, and I thought, wow, it's a monster. And I can remember seeing him down at the start at the Cheltenham Festival, and I thought, you know, I don't know what it was, but he, the horse just didn't look comfortable. Mm. But in the early part of the season, this horse looks very, very good. He's a puzzle, isn't he, Fitzy? Because like, I'd put him up as the best jumping novice chaser we saw all last season. Like, he was brilliant. Yeah. And then at the end, towards the back end of the season, when you really wanted him, it didn't happen. You know, is it the time of the year? Is it the, is the level of competition? You know, I, I don't I've know. I've got him in the Edward Stone camp, very man's game. Mm. Just for me. I know what you're saying, Fitzy, and there have been glimmers. But I think with, with the kind of horses that are around, you're going to need more than glimmers. You're, mm. you're going to need... But I think if he is to win a big one... It could be this. It could be the King yeah. George. Yeah. Lon Bresse wouldn't be out of this, could no, he? skip around there. absolutely not. Mm. Loves it. And in fairness to Nichols, like he'll, he's not so Cheltenham-obsessed at this no. stage that if he feels the King George is the one for him, he will train him for the King George uh, and, and I, get him and back I think, for the... I think in the back of Paul's mind, he'll be thinking that. Mm. OK, so let's get the selections then. Who wins the King George brave now? Man, brave man's game. Wow, that's a brave. That is a brave shout. Brave man's game. Sure, I did that. Uh, that's two that we've got into this show that people <laughs> will remember forever. Just say they were good. Uh, Kev, can you come up with anything better than that? No, not really. Look, if Alaho turns up, he wins. I think, doesn't he? It's not very creative, but you know, if people want winners, Matthew. Yes, Gallop and Deschamps in there. Oh, yeah. But um, you know when we're approached to do a show like this. And they say, would you like to do a jump set? And you go, yeah, yeah, I'd love to do that. Really exciting, get people in the mood. And then they say, oh, by the way, you can preview the Grand National. <laughs> like, did you just take a second think and think, are you sure, lads, are you sure? <laughs> and, 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 and they said, yeah, 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 let's preview the Grand National. I mean, I struggle to find the Grand National winner on the day of the race, let alone six months before. But anyway, let's go to April the 23rd, 2023, and it will be Grand National Day. And these are the current 10 bet prices. Not even sure how they found these horses. But anyway, <laughs> no, Noble Yates at 18 to 1. Statler, who by now will have won something at Cheltenham for Kevin, at 18. <laughs> Any second now, well, we know he'll be there if all things go right. Uh, Win My Wings is fascinating, of course. Um, she could be in the Gold Cup. We, we didn't even mention her as far as the Gold Cup is concerned, but that's her aim. Uh, Capadano at 25. Corrat Rambler at 25. Del, the old boy Delta work, 25. I mean, who knows? Sam Crow could be in here by the time it comes around. He won his point-to-point -point by distance the other day. Uh, Kitty's Light at 25, Galliard de Manila at 28, and Hewick, who might have won the Gold Cup by here, 28-1. to 1. Kevin, I know you were absolutely gagging to get into this. <laughs> so, could you go through, please, 
the runners and riders for the 2023 20, <laughs> Grand National will give us the winner. Well, I'll tell you something that's quite stark was that it, it, when we did this preview this You're time not last you year. You found the winner. No, no. Because, because the point is, <laughs> at this time last year, the subsequent Grand National winner had, had just made his chasing debut like a week earlier. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's Noble it's, Yates, it's yeah. incredible. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And I think we're going to get more of that. You know, I know they've got that silly rule there that you have to be seven to run in it. Uh, they might want to revisit that because I know there's a horse called Bustleton there that won the Kerry National. You'd love to aim at the Grand National, oh, but he's... That, oh, sorry, you work for Joseph O'Brien. Well, he was, he, 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 no he, bias he, he, here, no bias but you, here. But you'd love to see him run in the Grand National and he can't because he's too young and it's silly. He's got loads of experience. But anyway, um, if I had to pick one for it at the minute, um, I liked Longhouse Poet for the yep. race this year and I thought he ran a belter for an awful long way. He, he was a bit too gassy probably did too much too early and paid for it late on. And it's, it's not unheard of for a horse to do that. You, you, I suppose the, the case that springs to mind is Hedge Hunter. You know, he probably did too much in his first Grand National. They brought him back, rode him a bit differently, and he won my half the track. So, you know, Mark Brassel, great man for the race. Won the race. Um, will be training them with one race in mind. If, you, if I had to have one, it'd be him. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, Fitzy. Is you, the any second now is the Longhouse Poets. You sort of know that yeah, yeah. that's the race they're being aimed for. Mm -hmm. And they will be shorter on the day than they are as we speak now if they get there. But the big thing, of course, is the, the big if. But they will get in the handicap, yeah. so you're not worrying about that. I like uh, Gayard de Mainil, mm -hmm. who was on there. Third in the Irish National last year. He's a horse who's still a novice. And I think he is, if you're looking for one as a, a solid bet, he'd be my horse for the, the National Hunt Chase at this time. Because, he's, like I say, he's still a novice. He's got some very good form to his name mm. as a novice. Placed at this year's Cheltenham Festival already in one of the big novice races. So, going back there, I, I think he's, he's definitely one that I'd like to be on side with. He's a great one winner over hurdles as well. So, let's uh, just uh, recap what we're doing here. We are on the At The Races social media feed jump season preview show sponsored... Da -da! Ten bets. They'll be happy, won't they? They've, they've had a good few mentions now, haven't they? They'll be excellent. Right, they he'll also be, he'll sponsor... Be, he'll be sending them an invoice, won't he? What? <laughs> Not like you. <laughs> <laughs> other, other people would be upset if I did. All uh, right. Um, uh, they're also the sponsors, look at this, uh, of the At The Races Guide to the Jumps, which you can find on the internet at theracescom forward slash jumps mega site sponsored by 10 bet now what about novices no not us <laughs> no we're talking about the horses here and of course um we've mentioned facile vega of course uh, in, in a graphic already as far as a big double is concerned but there are always exciting horses coming through the ranks so let's have a look at the some anti-post betting for you for the big novice hurdle of the season. And it is, of course, for me, the Sky Bet Supreme Novices Hurdle. And 10 bet go 9 to 4, Facil Vega. Redemption Day, something I'm waiting for at 15 to 2. <laughs> uh, Jet Pad at 14. Your champ Keeley at 16 to 1. That's probably Kylie. Is it Keeley or Kylie? Uh, go with Kylie. Kylie. Yeah. Uh, Champ Keeley then. Marine Nacional at 16. American Mike at 18. Impulsive Dancer at 18. And 20 to 1 bar. Um, Kevin, it, it's very easy to start with Facio Vega because quite simply, if that horse does jump as well as it goes on the flat, it will win, I should think. Um, she look at all the champion bumper is generally your starting point these days, isn't it? And look, he was the dominant bumper horse last season. You know, he's got he's got this giant pedigree by walking the park out of Quivega. There was always going to be attention on him as a result, but from day one, or particularly day two, that day at Leopardstown, at the, on, on, uh, at the Dublin Racing Festival, he was just visually stunning and went to Cheltenham as one of, I suppose, one of the big two, him and American Mike, and uh, he left no doubt about it. He won well, went to Punchestown, confirmed the form. Um, you'd be shocked if he didn't make a hurdler. But look, as we mentioned earlier, we haven't seen this fella jump anything of any description in public. So he's one of those that when he does turn up in his maiden hurdle, probably in a month or so's time, you're just watching his technique very closely. And it just has, like you say, Matt... He tends on for that, though, wherever yeah, he goes. It just ha he just has to be adequate. He probably doesn't need to be brilliant over the hurdle. We know that his engine is so big 
that he doesn't need to be electric. It would certainly help. But um, yeah, he's, he's got to be your focus point. But that's, you know, an exercise in, in stating the obvious, I suppose, isn't it? We're good at that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you kind of just wait for that day, don't you, Fitzy, before your anti-post bet in this race, really, if you fancy something yeah. else. Because the moment you see the horse not be able to jump or jump, <laughs> yeah, but then I'm find someone who's still got prices up. Yeah, So, but then you've got to... I think it, in many ways, with some of the horses other than Facile Vega, you've got to back them now. Because if there is a kink in Facile Vega's jumping, then suddenly all those other horses are going to shorten. So if you are an anti-post player on some of those horses, I think you do have to look at it and say, right, OK, we've just got to not hope, but if something does go wrong with Facile Vega, suddenly then you're sitting on what, what looks like a very, very smart bet. But Redemption Day was a horse who created a few ripples from winning its bumper and then ran a very good race at Punchestown. Not beaten all that far. Um, there was a lot to like in the way that horse went through the race. And I think he's definitely a player. The other one that I really like, but I think could possibly go further, American Mike. If you look at him as a, an individual and as a race horse, and you look at that horse's pedigree as well. You know, that's a horse who has stamina right the way through. I think the, the dam won at Punchestown. She was placed, I think, in an Irish national as well. Mm. So that's, it's a very strong pedigree. And I think that, is de he, that horse looks like he could be really, really smart. And we've, we've, we've all seen it, Kevin, horses that look good on, in bumpers, mm. but are better when they see an obstacle. And when you see the horse in the flesh, he looks like a horse is going to be better over an obstacle. Yeah, and he had a genuine excuse at Punchestown as well. I think he scoped wrong afterwards. You know, he seemed to be beaten fair and square at Cheltenham, but you know yourself, that champion bumpers can be a funny race. Yeah. You know, the best horse doesn't always win it in the fullness of time. Like you say, added obstacles into the mix it can change everything. So, And Gordon, like, very much retains the fate of the American Mike. He thinks he's a rocket, you know. American Mike, they seem to think, will go two and a half miles yeah. in the in the in the Ballymore, possibly. Um, just one horse that's not in the betting here, and I suspect she won't end up in this race. I mean, it would obvious if she went the mare's route, but I was completely blown away, Fitzy, by Lucia at Sandown last season. I, I have no idea if she's as good as it looked, but she won by nearly 20 lengths, and she looked an absolute machine. Do you know how she's getting on? Or? Very well. Is she? Why are you smiling at uh, me like that? Because... <laughs> I was asked to pick out horses to follow, novices to follow, and she's one of them. Right. I, I have to say, I didn't know that list, so I'm just... So, uh... she, she, when she won at Sandown, mm. um, Ben French Davis won on her the first day, yep. and she won very nicely. She then went to Sandown, it was heavy ground, and she absolutely bolted up. She won 20 lengths going crazy. away. And it was a really strong performance. And, you know, look, at this time of the year, I always say it to... You know, to Nico Le Right, Nico, what was the best bumper horse last year? And without fail, he just said Lucia. Yeah. And the amazing thing that day, because I, I think I was doing the interviews that day, he, they didn't think she'd act in the ground. <laughs> like she drifted like a barge in the yeah. betting. <laughs> One by this, it was like it was it was like watching two races. It was that bizarre. But anyway, time will tell how good she is. But technically, she could run in the yeah. Supreme. Technically, she'd probably go the mayor's route. And just one map, because we have the same difficulty with most of these, yes. in that we haven't seen them jumping. One we have seen jumping, and it's probably worth a mention, because he, he is a big prize for the Supreme, is Gaelic Warrior. Right. Yeah. Um, good thing beaten in, yeah. in the boodles. You know, jumped out to his right. He, he was probably in the right position, but he just didn't help himself oh. jumping out to the right. Huge chat about him beforehand. Um, like, Willie has won the Supreme with a not dissimilar horse before in, in Classical Dream. You know, he had a bunch of runs in France and then came over and um, came over still as a maiden and went through the ranks and won the Supreme. Like, this fella has a fair bit of experience in the bank. Um, so you could see him certainly winning races, certainly in the first half of the season and shortening up significantly. Whether he proves good enough or as good as Willie's be best prospects in the fullness of time, time will tell. But I think he's, he's probably overpriced. They're surprisingly overpriced there at the minute. OK. A lot of the horses in the betting for the Supreme also feature in the betting, of course, for the Ballymore Novices Hurdle. They'll, they'll probably be featuring both lists even a week before 
the main races at Cheltenham as people uh, don't absolutely decide. Fassil Vega is the Vanity Post favourite, for instance, in the Ballymore novices hurdle, but I think most people would expect Fassil Vega to end up in the Supreme if the horse can jump. We've mentioned America Might, meant to go two and a half, seven to one. James's Gate at 10, and Toba at 12. Redemption Day's in there as well. The, the Keeley or Kylie is there, and we've just talked about Gaelic Warrior. Of, of that list, Mick, is there something in there that you feel will be well suited to the distance, even if we don't quite know? Now look, American Mike is the horse that, right. you know, he is definitely a novice that to follow this year, you know, like I say, I, I really like him, and I think he's he's got a very bright future. One, I suppose, slightly darker one, um, on Tupper that you mentioned there. Um, one is only starting the point to point by a long, long way. The, the point to point lads are really uh, screeching about him. Um, has changed hands privately, gone to Henry de Bromhead. Um, you know, he's one to look out for when uh, when he pops up. Yeah. OK, well, the lads didn't know this, but we're now going to go through the mayor's... Not, no, we're not. All uh, right. Uh, uh, the Albert Bartlett is the other one we'll have a look at. And again, there'll be a little bit of a cross at heart. It's absolutely sinking. Uh, Grand National was hard enough. Um, but um, the Albert Bartlett novices hurdle. American Mike again in there at 9-1. to one. Um, Fitzy, just out of interest, if you could win either the Ballymore or the Albert Bartlett, which do you think holds more sway? Ballymore. Do you? Not the... Would you, would you miss the Albert Bartlett if they got rid of it for no. 2024? No. Wouldn't you? No. Not even a little bit? No. Just sleepless night? No, Albert Bartlett. <laughs> um, OK, poor old Albert Bartlett. Uh, poor old Albert. Uh, America Mike at 10, Phil Dorr at 14, of course. Been a good horse, Redemption Day. I mean, look, it's, it's basically the same names. So just tell me who you think might end up as a real good stare. Look, I, I really like American Mike. Would he be a tree miler? He's just tipped him up for the old Ballymore. I know, but same thing. Tip him up for the Albert Bartlett. But you know what's going to happen? We're going we're to get to two weeks before March. Gordon's going to have around eight for both races. And he's going to have to chop and change. And, he, you know, you get to a spot where the likes of an American Mike could well be in a spot where he'll be five for either one. And, you know, I'd say there's enough stamina there in his yeah. profile that he could. It's not a great help to have... It isn't, but it is, it is what it is. These novice hurdles, you know, when you have 25 of them at okay. Cheltenham, it creates problems. Sitting on the fence. Fitzy, can you come up with something a bit better? No. No. OK. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, when, when they looked at who they could put on, <laughs> this is what they ended up, the only people who were willing to come in. All uh, right, with me. Uh, right, uh, let's have a look at a price boost quickly for you. Let's move on. Push the button, there we go. And don't forget, Constitution Hill to win the Christmas Hurdle and Champion Hurdle 2. Plutard to win the Betfair Jason Gold Cup is at 6. Fassil Vega to win the Supreme Novices Hurdle at 3. Well, if he wins his first race, he won't be 3-1 to one for that, that's for sure, because if he just shows he can jump, he could be the shortest anti-post favourite straight away, you'd imagine. And in Ergamine, Tingle Creek, Champion Jace Double at 11 to 2. It's fair to say if he does win the Tingle Creek, he will be shorter than 11 to 2. So, if you are throwing the dice, uh, not the worst place to look at it. Right, novice chasers often seen as the most exciting category in a season, so we are going to go down that route next. Of course, the Arkle is the absolute ultimate novice chase, and John Bon and Sir Gerhard will top the list here. You'd imagine 9 to 2 with our Kind sponsors, 10 bet. Uh, Sir Gerhard at 5. El Fabiolo at 7. Appreciated at 17 to 2. Funnily enough, the only odds that 10 bet haven't got here are 10 to 1 anything. But Constitution Hill at 11. Uh, Dice at Dynamo at 11 and 12 to 1 bar. Um, start with you, Fitzy. Um, John Bomb was very close to the best as a novice hurdler. Yeah. They've always said he's going to be a better chaser. If that is the case, he's clearly got a, a great chance here. Do you think he's going to have the speed for an Arkle? Yes, I do. Do you? Yeah, I do. Because he's so slick over his obstacles. Um, like, he, he, he paid... He's the, the Duvan relation, isn't he? Mm. Yeah, he, yeah. Brought he, mm. he paid the price for going and getting locked into a battle with Dysar Dynamo, I think, in a Supreme. I don't think we saw the best of John Bond that day. Um, but when you see this horse go from A to B over an obstacle, he, admittedly, he was only schooling over hurdles last year. He is so slick. But Nicky's open day, all the horses were paraded. 
of all the horses that were paraded, he was an absolute standout. He looked out of this world. He's done really well for his summer break and he looks like the complete package now, looking at him. Like he looked like it last year, mind, but at the same time, looking at him this year, he looks, he looks really, really good. To win the Arkle though, Kevin, do you think he's going to have to be better? Because he was put in his place and there were just one or two moments in the novice hurdles where you just questioned, well, I just questioned him a little bit, particularly Haydock. Hey, mm. Just there were moments when you thought, mm, does he, is he really in love with this? Uh, in the way that other horses you can see are just loving every second of it. I, I don't know, I just throw that in there. No, I think he needs to come up in terms of his form. You know, I don't think we saw the best of him at Cheltenham for, for the reasons you mentioned. They kind of got the tactics just went a bit wrong. Um, but with his profile, his pedigree, his physical, everything, he should be a better chaser. Um, so, look, I think he's fair at the front of the market. If you like him, you have to mention El Fabiolo, who, who ran him so close at Aintree, you know, despite yeah. significantly less experience. You know, and, and it was, I think it struck everyone that heard it when he won his maiden hurdle around Tremor. Yeah. You know, Willie was, was very bullish about him. You know, like he was talking him up as in this, this could be one of our better novices. And he just had a number of little setbacks and hold-ups that ruled him out of a few intended um, outings. And, but he showed at Aintree that he is very, very good. And look, I don't know if he's going to go chasing or not. There's none of those decisions seem to be made yet. But if he did, you'd have to strongly consider him. Mm. Yeah, the whole time I'm fascinated in this race, appreciate it. Mm. Because obviously he didn't quite come up to scratch in the champion hurdle and he made a few mistakes um, after a long layoff but I don't know I've, he just has always looked like a chaser to me and if he absolutely bolts up in his first novice chase I think he could be a short price for this. Well, he, was, he was going to be wasn't he? You yeah know, he was season, and then they said they couldn't get enough schooling into him. Yeah he got hit a hold up. Didn't want to run him off little, little experience in a race like the yeah. Arkle but should he have run better in the champion hurdle? Probably. Not a, not a vintage one. No. He, like, it's not like he ran bad, but no. you can, uh, he was trained for it, you know, yeah. went straight there. Willie was kind of sounding quite bullish leading up to the but race. They, so. they were very, they seemed very hopeful and confident in a way mm. of him running a big race in the champion hurdle. So he's, mm. he's, he's definitely a player, especially like you say, with a clean run for the start of the season. You know, mm. if he wins, if he wins his first novice chase, just if he just wins he's that, gonna first, be, yeah. he's got yeah. half the price. Yeah, and, and the thing you'd say is like, if you if you forget about last season, and I don't think it's unreasonable to say that because it's not like he had a bad injury or anything. It was a small hold up, and they decided just to go straight to Cheltenham. Like if you look back in his novice hurdle campaign and you watch the way he jumped. You know, you'd say, oh, I, I know I was thinking the whole way through that season. God, there's a chaser. Yeah. There's a chaser. That's a chaser. You know, so like you say, if you he looked like a horse who'd been schooled, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> like he, <laughs> he, just had, he just had that technique that you yeah. think would translate really well to the bigger ones. So, like you say, if he comes out in his beginner's chase, it's not a shock if he wins like an absolute weapon and all of a sudden everyone remembers just how good this horse was as a, as a bumper horse and a novice hurdler. Yeah. And he's, before you know it, he, he's fab for the Arkham. In, champ, in the champion hurdle, he jumped one or two brilliantly, mm. but then he jumped three or four Ifily, and as mm. if he didn't know whether it was going to be a fence or a hurdle for me. But anyway, Tom, you mentioned early in the show Mighty Potter. Were you going to mention yeah. him in this? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, oh. yeah. No, really liked him all the way through. I remember this time last year speaking to Gordon about him when the horse was on no one's radar, really, and be, being really struck with how bullish Gordon was about him. And I know today from reading what he's saying about him, he's still very bullish about him. Um, he was my fancy in the Supreme Novice, wasn't happy from the get-go. He was hanging, he didn't look happy, was pulled up in the end. But thankfully went to Punchestown and showed that, that that wasn't him at all and came back and, and beat Sir Gerhardt. And again, with his jumping technique, you look at him and you go, you're a chaser, you're a chaser. What's his trip going to be? I don't know. I looked at him a few times last season and wondered would Gordon send him up to two and a half for the Ballymore, but he persisted with two. He, he was adamant that he had the pace for two. Um, so what he do over fences? I'd say he'd have both options, but really looking forward to seeing him over a fence. I think he, he could potentially be very nice. Now, lads, if I said to you, would you like some free bets, what would you say to me? Yes, please. Absolutely. Well, thank you for saying please anyway, Fitzy. But yeah, um, yes is the answer, of course. Um, and if you fancy some free bets, just go straight over to the At The Races Twitter feed right now 
and our kind sponsors, Tembet, will be giving you some free bets. Can't do much more than that, can we? No. Free bets. It's a crazy world we Love it, Matt. Love it. Crazy. If you want a free bet, you might want to use it in the Turner's Novices Chase because it's going to be quite hard to find the winner. But Sir Gerhard in there at 9-2, to two, John Bon at 11-2, to two, Constitution Hill, surely not. Something oh. will have gone wrong at 8. <laughs> the nice guy at 17-2, to two, Mighty Potter at 9. Three Stripe Life at 9. Ten Bet, our kind of sponsors, have got 10-1, to one, El Fabiolo. Mm. And Time Hill, who class-wise will be well up to this. Um, he might need a bit further. Who knows? Um, what do we reckon, team? <sighs> um, we start with Sir Gerhard, will we? Since he's at the top of the market. You start wherever you like, Kev. You're in control now, which is quite a worrying thought. Always dangerous. Mm. Yeah, trip-wise, like to me, looking at him as a novice hurdler leading up to Cheltenham, my view was he was probably going to be better as a two-miler. Mm. They went to two and a half. He won. I think he won despite the trip. My thought was watching that race. We won't see him at two and a half for a while. But uh, look, fences can change things. Um, they might well settle him down. One would hope that he might jump. Like, his jumping got a lot of stick leading up to Cheltenham. I didn't think it was as bad as the stick suggested. And nah, he, at Leopardstown, Kevin, he was terrible. He, I, what a terrible, strong Fitzy. He, he, he was he, terrible. He wasn't perfect. He was terrible. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, I'll meet you somewhere in the middle. <laughs> but he was better at Cheltenham. He was. And look, I think... I think you'd hope with his background and everything else the offence will suit him a bit better and he'll be a little bit more efficient, etc. But um, would I have him at the top of the market there, blew out in his final start? Probably not. Um, one that wasn't in the betting there that I want to mention is Jerry Colomb. Um, didn't go to Cheltenham for Gordon, um, but was unbeaten prior to that and, and looked a lovely prospect. Had a bit of a setback, I think. Um, but again, has always looked a, a real chaser. Um, saw him in the flesh at Turles last season, was very impressed with him physically. And he's one now that will, could quickly come back on people's radars once he reappears and everything is on track. I think he might start off a down royal. Um, Gordon always starts off some lovely ones there. He could be one that, to start there. Um, so if you're of an optimistic nature, it might, now might be a good time to have a peek at him because uh, he's big prices now and he might be big prices for long. OK, so if you have turned to the at the races, Twitter feed, and you've got your free bet. Maybe that's one to have a look at. Let's just move on to the Brown Advisory. And I know the team were particularly keen to sort this out for you. So let's just quickly check out the betting, first of all. Uh, the nice guy given a strong mention by Fitzy already on this show at 7-2. to two. Uh, These are the 10-bet anti-post prices. Minella uh, Kaguna is at 10s. Three-stripe life at 12. A lot of familiar names. Blazing Cal at 14. Uh, Hillcrest, incidentally, out for the season now. So he definitely won't be winning the Brown Advisory at 14. Uh, John Bon at 14. Uh, appreciated at 16. Um, again, we got that same mix of names. I mean, the one that springs to mind here for me is Time Hill fits here, 18 to 1. I mean, if he can jump, I know he's up, he's up to this. It's a massive price. You know, for a horse who I thought was going to be a major player in the stairs hurdle, he didn't have the run of things in the Albert Bartlett that Monkfish won. He got bullied out of it, and in the end, I think he, he might have only finished fourth. Um, but he's a smart horse, this fella. Yeah. Uh, he's fragile, though. That's the only thing. He, you know, you don't see that much of him through the season. He's not an overly big horse. So I, it'll be interesting to see. But how isn't he a typical anti-post bet in that yeah, oh, there but, are risks? But if yeah. he's there on the day and he's got three ones or two ones next to his name, he's not going to be 18-1, to one, is he, Kev? That, that's, that's what anti-post betting is about. Yeah, for sure. I think he'd want that sort of price because it's one of those that if he, if he didn't jump that well on his chasing debut, you could, you could see him taking a pull and going, OK, we'll go back to hurling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it, need, the, it needs to go... If it he needs... does jump well, he's half the price, so yeah. he swings around about Yeah. Like one I'd mentioned there, um, Manila Crooner, yeah. rather than Cocooner, yeah. just to confuse everyone. Um, Gordon Elliott's one. Um, really, you, you become a, a bit. Are you not? Are you racing manager for the Elliott Stable? You 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 become a bit of a groupie in the shows. It's not so much that, Matt. You're, you're right to highlight it because I have talked about a lot of Gordon horses. You have. But the thing is, we got all our updates. Are you we got in them. No, no, no. That's right. Okay. That's right. Mike Elliott's job. It's usually, when you when you speak a lot about a stable, it's usually because you have a link in no, somewhere. No, no, no. Selling horses to them. What 
are you up to? You're clearly in. We It's a very logical reason, Matt, in that we've seen this stable tour today and we know what's going on with them. We know what's going chasing, what's staying hurdling, whereas with Willie's battalions, we don't have a clue. So it's, <laughs> you, you, try, you know, I don't like to waste people's time, Matt, in, in talking about things we don't know about, mm. whereas Crooner is going to go chasing. And I really liked him as a novice hurdler. Um, I, I was going to fancy him for Cheltenham. He had a bit of a, he had a, bit of a setback prior, didn't run, went to Pontchastown, ran terribly, had an excuse. Um, and again, he's just one of those, you watch him jump in a hurdle and you say, right, a fence for you. you know, did, they, did they actually run against each other? I mean, like, yeah, they were one, two, crew, yeah, just yeah. to be helpful at Leopardstown, <laughs> yeah. And he ran a cracker that day. I think he, he just missed the second last, at a fairly, which was at a very vital point at Leopardstown. Finished off really well. I, I, I thought if they rematched, that crooner would have a great chance of reversing it with crooner. Um, I'm going to have a word with John Nallan about these names. It's just not helpful, is it? You can <laughs> um, imagine the old days of betting slips, you know, oh, 20, yeah, 30 yeah. years ago. Dodgy people used to write, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm not crying. <laughs> <laughs> um, Three Stripe Life, where is that? Where, where might he go? He's going chasing, but again, pot trip yeah. would be up in the air. He, say, would, yeah. he would have to come into calculations mm. for some of those races because he's another one that looks like, like I know we're pigeonholing horses into, oh, looks like a jumper, looks like a chaser. But actually, when you see him, he's got a bit of size about him. You know, he's a horse that travels nicely through his races. And sometimes when they go chasing, they find that little bit more yeah. because they are actually able to get from A to B with ease. Mm. Uh, one that was in the betting there that we, we, we best mentioned because he, he did go missing last season was Blazing Cal, Charles Burns. Like, he was shaping up into a very smart staying novice the last time we saw him. I don't know, I haven't heard any plans if he is going chasing or going down the staying hurdle route, but he's worth keeping an eye out on now for some updates because there's a lot of ability there. And uh, he, he was really building momentum when we last saw him back, the, back in December. And uh, he might just uh, make up for last time this season. Well, the favourite in here is the nice guy, winner at the uh, yeah, Bartlett and mm -hmm. Punchestown. He's lightly raced, but he's a little bit older. Mm. Like he's seven now, rising eight. He again, like he, he looks like he's got a lot of talent and he certainly looks like, like Monsignor never reached the heights that Malcolm Demat would have liked him to have reached. And wouldn't it be quite fitting, I suppose, that if these colours were to, to hit the big time with this fella? Yeah, and I think he, he was a massive surprise to everyone in Willie's, I think, last season. He, he's not a horse that shows much at home, seemingly. Really? And, he just kept surprising them and surprising them. I'm sure he might have been, what, third or fourth string in the Albert yeah, Bartlett, yeah. And despite being Sean unbeaten. Rodham, yeah, a wet and one. Yeah, so you, you kind of like him like that. Yeah. You don't know where the ceiling is. But then, again, when he went to Punchestown, mm. there was no doubt Paul Townham was going to ride it. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're going to have a look at handicappers and just horses to follow, effectively. There might be one or two Gordon Elliott names in here. I mean, Salvador Ziggy would be one who just keeps on winning at the moment and, and could, could be anything moving forward. Um, let's start with you, Kev, because you are, you've clearly got the word on the Irish stables. Um, handicappers or horses to follow in Ireland outside of the obvious names that we've already been discussing? Yeah, for a handicapper, I give you Ain't That a Shame. Um, Henry de Bromhead, fancied him for Cheltenham last year, didn't go right at all, um, didn't run well. But I think when you look at the form, the depth of it, I think he's definitely handicapped to win a big one. I don't know, I haven't heard any update on him. It'd be, it'd be fascinating if he went for something like the, the Coral Gold Cup as it is now, uh, the old Hennessy Labrooks Trophy. Um, he's off the right sort of rating for that. Um, I, I think there's a big one in him. He's definitely worth keeping an eye on. And just in terms of general horse to follow, I'll stick her in here because I've no idea what she's doing, hurdling or chasing or what have you. But I'd have huge regard for Brandy Love um, of Willie Mullins's. You know, I, I thought she did some incredible things last year. You know, she was just touched off um, in, a, in a graded mare's race um, leading up to Cheltenham despite, you know, it being one of the most errant displays you'll yeah. ever see in terms of jumping and hanging left. And she only just got pipped. I thought she was an absolute good thing at Cheltenham in the mare's novice. She was ruled out on the morning through a little setback. And then she went back to Fairy House, you know, right handed again because that's where the grade one option was. And I thought Paul Townend gave her the ride of the yeah, season. Yeah. He was brilliant. She wanted to keep going left and he managed to keep her, um, he, you know, a horse on her keep outside. Her on the track. Yeah, un until the last two when she started to go left again. But she met the, the, the mayor's novice winner from Cheltenham and absolutely kicked her out of the way, you know, despite all that going left, all the ground she lost. 
when she goes back left-handed. Like, she could be anything. Like, she could be a proper, open, grade one class horse for me. Don't know if she's going chasing or, her or staying hurdling wherever she goes. Like, I think she has an awful amount of ability. Like, really good, potentially. Yeah. Uh, Fitzy? Oh, no, look, I think you're looking at some of those early season races, and that's why I said earlier on, can we please bring back the novice handicap mm -hmm. at the festival? Because races like the Paddy Power, you know, the horses that ran in, in those mm -hmm. sort of races, they love stepping up then to run in that sort of race because it always used to be the, the logical next step. I, I think you're looking at horses whose form tailed off at the back end of the season, you know, your likes of Fiddler on the Roof, a high senior who, he looks so good around Newbury. Could they possibly target him at a race like that Coral Cup at Newbury? Yeah, he's, he's, I think he's fab. He's, he's yeah. anti-post anti fab. He so. like, he, I, I think he's, he's exposed in the sense that you know where he is, but I think the race is made for him. Mm. I certainly can't wait to see my Drogo. I'm still, I still, yeah. there's something about that horse. Isn't he one we're going to see a little bit later in the year? Might do. Yeah. Mm. But just as a horse to look out for, yeah. I think there's a good prize in the Wolf, who's a horse I've always wanted to see in a good chase. And um, he's all, sounds silly to mention a horse who's already been a grade one winner, but Riders on the Storm changed stables and lost his yeah. way a little bit after winning a grade one. But there were, there were moments last season where I thought that horse has got all his ability still. And I think he could pop up in something. As Three well. under two five is a horse who last year won at Warwick as a novice. Um, I thought they ran him in the in the three miler at the festival. I thought he was going to run in the, in the national hunt chase. I think he's a horse for a stay and chase mm. this year. He's definitely one to keep on the right side. Of okay. Do you want? And I wouldn't if I was you, but nature of the beast slightly. Do you want to give your best nap? for the jump season ahead, or do you want to just keep it to yourself? Oh, yeah. okay, I've got one. OK, good. Mm -hmm. uh, right, in that case, um, let's go to you, Kev. You sound optimistic here. Is it Gordon Elliott, first of all? No. Wow. Not even an Irish horse. Crikey. Wow. That, that would have been a big price. Bring you, we've shipped you over <laughs> at huge expense to give us the best bet in Ireland, and you tip one of ours. Well, it, it's one of those, Matt, because we, we, it's been a theme... Is the this whole... just to put the mockers on one of ours? No, not as such, but <laughs> it, look, it's, it's been a theme the whole way through, you know, in terms of at this time of year, you want to know where they're going. And if you, if you can land on a horse that you know with certainty, if, if all is fine, they're going to be there. And there's one there in the mare's hurdle that I, I'm amazed she's not fav, because you might be able to tell me more, Fitzy. She's got, surely going to be aimed there. And her form at the back end of last season makes her the one to beat, you know, assuming none of the, the likes of Honeysuckle doesn't turn up, is Marie's Rock. You know, she, she was, she threatened to be disappointing for a little while, but the second half of last season, she really started the role. She won, she won the Mayor's Hurdle last year, but even more so, she went to Cheltenham, sorry, she went to Punchestown and, and beat, like, the, the best Mayors around, really, within reason, you know, that, that's just over that mid-range trip. And, like, if she can bring that level of form through to this season, I think she's 8-1 to one or so for the mare's hurdle. Like, she's not going to be that price on the day, is she? Well, you, know? you, you, you wouldn't have thought so. It was amazing. Like, you talk about horses who disappear. And she got lost. Mm. She used to get herself very, get very upset, and very keen, mm. jump and went to pot. And then Nicky just kept being patient with her, kept being patient, kept being patient, and he said, I think I've got her back. Mm. And then, bang. Yeah. And the form, the, her form seemed to basically keep rising. Yeah, like Stormy, she beat Stormy Ireland, she beat Epitant. Yeah. You know, but what's she going to meet that's better than those within reason in the Mayor's Hurdle? Nothing. You know, okay. I think eight to one's a, a big old price. Marie's Rock for the Mayor's Hurdle. Midland Park yeah. have done tremendously well during the uh, flat season in 2022. Uh, Mick Fitzgerald. Gay the one horse you would like to ride at the Cheltenham Festival in the season? Ooh, well, obviously, it'd be a absolute hard if I could pick one horse to ride. I think if okay. one to back next year in the National Hunt Chase, Gayard Dumenil. Right. He's already been to Cheltenham, placed in a, in a good race, third in an Irish national. He's still a novice. He looks tailor-made. You're not guessing. He's raced around 150. A related contingency now, Fitzy, but I wonder, could we get, tee someone up to give you a price for the National Hunt Chase Grand National Double? Yeah. Ten bet. That would be nice. Yeah, come on, then. Go on, ten bet. That would be, be, be an interesting one. Well, it might not be my son. It could be anyone. I don't know. Ten bet could be anyone, couldn't it? Go on, girl. Uh, 
Uh, we Ooh. wish you well with that, Fitzy. Ten bet whistling through a price uh, as we speak. And remember, hold on, hold on, hold on. those <laughs> free bets on the At The Races Twitter feed you can use for any of the good things. Look, a lot of the names were fairly obvious in our chats today, but um, uh, I think it's fair to say that it just whets, hopefully, some sort of appetite. What about some price boosts for you once again? You may have seen them along the way. If you miss them, here are the 10 bet for the better price boosts. Constitution Hill to win the Christmas Hurdle and Champion Hurdle, two to one. Um, a Plutard, Betford Chase Gold Cup, six. Fassel Vega, Supreme, three. Energamine, Tingle Creek, Champion Chase, lemon, two. I I'll go to our, uh, my, my great team. Of those four, Mick, which one would you take yourself? A Plutard. Yeah. Same. Yeah, six to one. It's a big price. He's got. He's surely going to be fairly, on, fairly long odds Haydock. on for yeah. for Haydock, and mm -hmm. he was so good there last year. You could see him absolutely molly whopping him, and uh, he's been there and done it in the Gold Cup too. Yeah. Well, the good thing is Tembat have told me they're going to hold that price for forever. Uh, <laughs> no, they haven't. They haven't said that. That's. I'm just pretending Tembat don't go crazy. Um, that was a joke. Um, but they might. You never know. Uh, right, that was the, uh, what was it? The can, At The Race can, jump season preview. Can I just put up yes, you a, can. A, a couple of horses that, mm -hmm. um, a horse of Pat Doyle's called Flame Bearer. Right. Kevin will know a bit yeah. more about him. Um, I thought he ran some very good races last year. You know, he, he's like, he's not a big stable. So I think he might just get in at a reasonable price. He's a horse who won two grade twos last year. He's very smart. Mm. He's a little bit older. He has run in a point to point, and he'll be, I think, very interesting. Flame Bear has moved, stable, hasn't it? It's, it's um, Willie Mullins now, isn't it? Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, I think so. Mm. Think so. Word along the, on the great vine. vine. Well, you see, that's when you have your finger on the pulse mass. Good well, job we've got you here. Yeah, but anyway, just great memories just, of a just terrific hope horse there. Just hope you're right. I used to love finger <laughs> on the pulse. Flame Bearer, <laughs> definitely one to keep on the right side of. And I thought um, Bally Griffin Cottage of Dan Skelton's. Mm. He's a horse that they ran in first time over hurdles in a grade, graded race yeah, great big at piece. Cheltenham. And he ran some really good races. He actually finished on the back of them. I think he was fifth in the Albert Bartlett. I think he's very interesting. So keep yeah. an eye on him. It's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Jump season. Getting ready to rumble. Yeah. 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 We are getting ready to rumble. That's just about it, though from the jump season preview here on the at the races social media feed don't forget to check out all the 10 bet prices but from mick fitzgerald kevin blake and myself have a great jump season